their shells were going clear through the ship, through the flight deck, down through the hangar deck, and right through into the water. And then they caught onto that. Then they started sending shells over that would explode on contract. And that's where we ran into trouble. I joined the Gambier Bay in February of 1943, and uh, 1944, excuse me. I was in bed. and. Uh, we had a general quarters sounded, and then shortly thereafter, another one came on and said, attention all hands, there's an enemy force 20 miles away and bearing down. Yes. And then we heard the shells starting. You never know when you're in, the, in that circumstance whether you should stand still or whether you should move about. And uh, people that took either avenue uh, were safe and some were shot. And there was just all black smoke. And I remember lying on the catwalk for I don't know how long. And finally I saw light and I crawled out just in time to hear our captain call for abandoned ship. Then very shortly thereafter I was uh, in the water. And that, as I entered the water, my wife got a big kick out of this because I told her when I put my foot in the water to check the temperature, I accepted it. <laughs> and we uh, had a few of our own planes flying over and some of the people in our group in the water had a mirror which they flashed up above and we could see the airplanes up there weaving their wings, acknowledging our signal. So they knew we were there. And it was a, late at night, and uh, we heard the motor coming, and we didn't know what it was. And finally, somebody said, are you American? I don't know whether that question came from our people in the water or the men on the boat, but we all agreed that it was we were Americans. And they threw over a landing net, and we proceeded to climb up onto the patrol craft.